more or, more or less the same. The first presentation of the day, we have less people and then they come, but that's it. Um, okay, my uh, presentation is on human wildlife conflict and road collisions with ungulates. And we, I present a risk analysis and design solution in Trentino. Um, human wildlife interaction, human wildlife conflicts are a very well known part of the interaction between human and animals. There are a lot of them. Some are uh, well known, like uh, uh, large carnivores, farmers uh, and herders, or farmers and wildlife in general. But also the road kills, it's a big problem, it's a huge problem, the fauna road kills. Uh, just to give you some numbers, in Europe every year 200 million animals are killed. This, is in, this includes also the small animals, not only the large ones. Um, 300 people, um, around 300 people are killed in incidents and 30,000 are wounded. And there is uh, around 1 billion euro of material damages. Um, the um, mitigation methods can you can have different mitig mitigation methods some can be adopted to reduce the risk uh, of the collisions uh, for example animal detection system road warning signs real time warning system to alert drivers of ungulates underpasses overpasses viaducts and so on um, and all, or a combination of all these uh, intervention and um, the special positioning of this solution along the roads and the integration of each intervention in the specific specific local terrain morphology adapting it to the animal behavior are crucial to obtain effective results. The main purpose of this work is to test phosphor G to identify the road section with a high number of collision, proposing and designing practical engineering solution tailored to these hotspots, test the combination of GIS, field, of GIS and field surveys to investigate the local morphology at each hotspot, understand the economical feasibility of the practical solution that were more appropriate to each specific situation, including the costs, and try to compare the cost to the avoided cost. And finally, to provide some general consideration on the topic. The study area is the autonomous province of Trento, uh, and it is uh, uh, high forest coverage, around more than 60% um, the, of the area is, is covered by forest. And uh, it is mainly a mountainous area, and there is a dense road network. And uh, there are a lot of ungulates and um, uh, since January 2000, every road collision caused by, caused by the ungulates was reported by the forest services or by the hunter association, and uh, the road uh, and it was stored in a geo database. This database records the date, the species uh, of affected ungulate, the sex, and indication of the age and uh, the geographical coordinates. And the last update we used is from uh, August 2022. So we use the, the, the materials we used are the road kills from the period uh, from 2000 to 2022, the traffic data, because we have a lot of traffic data regarding this, um, the cartographic uh, raster and, and vector data, and we have uh, um, high resolution uh, DTM, one meter resolution DTM of the area, so it, it, it can be used in a very effective way. And uh, regarding, and uh, a lot of other data that are listed in the, in the paper. Um, procedure and methods, we uh, did a statistical analysis on the uh, collisions, a, a GIS analysis on the area, and uh, we had also a lot of meetings with the faunistic uh, offices and also with the hunter association to define some of the things uh, to do. And it, it, we studied the general condition, the traffic, the morpho morphology, the barriers, land use, covers, and so on. And we had field visit, a lot of field visit. And uh, in the end, we, we designed, um, we have the designing phase and the cost calculation. Uh, the data is listed, uh, the datum is listed in the end uh, of the, um, ah, sorry, I forgot one important thing. We mostly we use the grass GIS and QGIS, which are the, the, the main software we use in, in, this, uh, um, uh, in this work. Um, stat let, let's have a look at the statistical analysis. Uh, the collision with road ears from 2000 to 2022 uh, are getting more and more frequent, as you can see here. And um, it is uh, definitely road ears, which has the, are the smaller one, ungulates, compared to red ears, that are the ones that uh, are more interested. 
uh, we can compare with the red deers. We have also a more uh, collisions with red deers in the last years, and also we have a larger number of roe deers and red deers in the last, in the last years. So we can see these, uh, the, the phenomenon is becoming more and more important, and so it's becoming really worrisome. Um, if we look at the seasonality also, um, we see that the road deer collision monthly distribution is more or less even, uh, um, while the red deer, for example, is mostly con uh, concentrated in uh, the uh, beginning of the year and in the, the end of the year, which is the, are the period in which basically the, these guys are in law. So they have uh, uh, the period in which they are more... Um, uh, they, they lose their control basically and they go in, uh, on, the, on the roads and they get killed or something like that. Um, apart from them, there is also the hour of the day because, uh, for example, those guys are uh, uh, going to frequent the area mostly at uh, dusk and dawn or in the hours that are nearby at dusk and dawn, while in the center of the day it is, more, it is less frequent that they actually cross the roads. So it is, uh, and it is both uh, true for red deer and for roe deer. Another thing uh, to keep in mind is the lunar phase, because uh, also the lunar phase is important, because when there is the, the full moon, uh, there is more light, so the animals are actually going um, out in um, uh, um, more, and they are more likely to be killed in that uh, uh, period. The, the, the time is expanding after the time. Let's have a look uh, at the road kills. You see they are quite spread all over in, uh, in the area. All the main roads are interested by this, so you have a lot of them. And, um, and the crossing points uh, are influenced by local conditions, uh, corridors, terrain morphology, and so on. So it is uh, a quite complicated situation from this point of view. And um, this is the, from 2000 to 2022, as I said before. The first simple thing to do is uh, highlighting hotspots using heat maps, which is a sort of mm, evident way to, to extract the information. Uh, we use the kernel density estimation with a radius uh, of uh, 1,450 map units, which we considered was the best for our option. The, um, and um, we saw that there are some hotspots, but also there were some problems to decide which was the which were the, the, the most uh, likely areas to be interested by. Because in 2018 there was a, a strong storm in uh, um, in Trentino, and after the storm there were uh, put some paraboulders, avalanche barriers, and so on. So some parts that uh, were actually interested by crossing by the animals are no more interested after 2018. So what we did is we uh, uh, reduced the period of interest of the uh, of the road kills only to the period 2017 to 2020 to have a more uh, likely and faithful representation of the um, of the area and um, um, we identified the five hotspots which are these yellow one. Uh, you can see probably the little bit uh, blurry, but they are here. And uh, for each specific case, we uh, analyzed it in a specific way, and we tried to, to find a, um, some specific uh, uh, solutions uh, to the problem. And um, we also uh, did a rough estimation, metric computation, uh, to determine the order of magnitude and the cost required to implement the recommended uh, intervention. Um, the rough estimation was carried out on the basis of previous work that calculated the, the costs in um, a specific way. Um, uh, I will show you these uh, uh, five examples. One is this one, is the hotspot between uh, Mezzana and Pelizzano. In this way, case, we, the, the, the preview in intervent is only to put some fences, so is, the cost is relatively low. It's 32,000 euros, so not, not that much, uh, because uh, we are going to use a, an already present uh, um, crossing, which is uh, an underpass, so it's uh, not very costly from this point of view. Uh, and we are going to use not one, but two underpasses there are there. So basically this is the, um, uh, and this is accompanied by some other intervention like the installation of fences or uh, light reflectors. Um, 
Another, um, in another area is this one, is the crossing between uh, Vicolo Baselga and Vezzano. The cost is definitely higher here, 2000, 2,051, uh, um, 200, sorry, 51,000 euro. And um, in this case, uh, there is a mix of uh, intervention, like we have to put an overpass, so to build an overpass, overpass are very costly, so you have to, to put this when in, the, in this case, and um, also some other other system, an anti-collision system and uh, uh, alert system. So the, the whole thing together is um, a little bit more costly from this point of view. Um, and uh, while in the case of Cimego and Borgo Chiese, which is this other case here, again, it's a relatively cheap intervention because basically there's some fencing and uh, to introduce, to, to address the animals in a certain direction. Um, in the case of the first one, the Vigolo Baselga in Bezzano, um, okay, the, the, it's not that perfect, the, the light, but the idea is uh, there is, a, a, we decided to, to go for an overpass here because we can use this high terrain here to, uh, as a, a, one of the, of the shoulder of the bridge, basically. And, um, uh, then there is another case which is uh, um, between Molina di Fiemme and Masi di Cavalese and uh, in this case we also the cost uh, is uh, a little bit higher or 82,000 euros and in this case we have uh, an underpass that can, must be actually built and um, we decided to go uh, for building this uh, underpass uh, in uh, an existing, um, in an area which is a little bit uh, elevated here, so you can actually excavate in, uh, in that part, so the, the cost is relatively, it's not low, but it's not even too much from this point of view, and um, so it's relatively affordable. Um, then I will uh, concentrate a little bit more on the last case, which is a hotspot between uh, Levico, Le Levico Terme and Campiello. And uh, because in this case, we uh, actually exploited a little bit more the, uh, the capability of the GIS. For example, we were able to use the DTM to de determine that this is a funnel morphology. So actually, the animals are using this area because uh, there is a sort of funnel uh, morphology of the terrain. They are going to use this for a Mm, geographical, let's say, uh, morphological uh, situation. And then there is here, it is not very clear probably from there, but there, are, there is a forest area here, which is completely forested. Then there is a, a, an open area, which also passes uh, some uh, secondary roads. And then there is a patch of forest here. And the patch of forest is a sort of, a sort of magnet. So actually the, the animals are crossing exactly in this, in this area. And the this is the, 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 the place in which you have the most of the healings, basically. And um, uh, the hotspots the, or between, between Levico Terme and Campiello, uh, here we decided to go for a, um, an overpass, and this is quite costly, to 233,000 uh, euros. And um, the idea is to make this... Uh, uh, large uh, overpass uh, and uh, to uh, invite the animals by putting some fences in the, in the right places to um, address them in the right direction. So this is the, um, the way we, we are thinking about it. And uh, again, we use uh, this morphology here because we have this uh, higher um, part. So to put one shoulder of the bridge the, here and the other one will be uh, on the other part. So that's the, um, the idea to, to build uh, the whole thing. This is uh, a, a project, the part of the project. You can see that uh, it's a hot rolled steel, uh, prof um, the deck is a hot rolled steel profile with the reinforced concrete lab. And then you have uh, waterproofed with plastomeric membrane. You have a, a layer of expanded clay, and then we put some vegetation there. Um, trying to um, to use uh, bushes with non tapping root system, so we are not going to have uh, at least in the uh, mean uh, time term problems about it. Um, so this is what it should actually appear in the in time, and the, the presence of uh, of the vegetation should actually encourage the animals to to pass there. Um, <laughs> 
We are not going to do some very large overpasses like you, like you can see in Canada or some other passes for other places because we do not have actually nor the money and neither the uh, the space to do that. But the, but for these animals, it could be um, enough. Uh, so the total cost of the, the whole intervention that I present you is uh, 625,000 euros, and they're going to reduce 6% of the collisions compared to 2000, the period 2016-17 to 2022. It seems uh, a low number, 6%, but we will see in a specific case that probably it is not so low if you compare it with the cost. And um, here are the avoided, uh, here are the cost of, of uh, the collisions. You can see 700,000 uh, um, euros, uh, 500,000 euros, 700, uh, almost 800,000 euros in the, in the five different uh, uh, areas that we are considering. So, it, I mean, in general, it is uh, a high um, level. We just concentrate on the Levico overpass, which was the, the last one that we saw bef before. And uh, just to, com to have an idea, the cost of the infrastructure is uh, this one. So it's around, uh, let's say, 300 uh, euro, including the bureaucratic and something like that, uh, that you have to put on that. And the total cost of the road kills in the period from 2017 to 2022 is much higher. So it's around five, 500 uh, uh, thousand euros. So you see that actually this um, is uh, relatively effective. Um, one other thing that I wanted to show you is the collision per municipality in the area. And um, you have uh, the collision per municipality and the collision per municipality uh, rep um, rated on the municipality surface. So how much, how large is the surface, so how many collisions you have. There are some European funding to make uh, this kind of intervention. But so far, uh, only four municipalities in the area have used them to uh, create some some intervention uh, against the problem, which is a real problem. We have uh, around, in Trentino, we have around 1,000 um, collisions uh, each year, and um, 1,000 collisions, it's, it's a real problem in the, in the area, and uh, so it's really a, a problematic uh, thing. Another thing that I want to show you is this uh, reclassified map according to collision risk. Uh, okay, the, the, the quality is, uh, is not that good, but you can find it in the paper anyway. And uh, the, um, it is reclassified on the different uh, uh, risk of uh, um, collisions, and it can be used by the local um, organizations to, to reorganize their tracks, their roads, and so on. Um, I'm coming to the conclusion, and I will take some time for that because I have a lot of things to do, <laughs> to, to say. And uh, so the first thing is uh, we used PhosphoGIS, and they were effectively used to identify the, the position of the fire road kills hotspots. Uh, they support the engineering uh, um, design, and uh, we they also were useful. They were also useful to um, to create general maps, useful for policy and territorial planning. Um, the cost-benefit analysis, comparing to the cost of the infrastructure, shows that the infrastructure are effective in reducing the cost in the long, in the medium-long uh, term. But the construction of the five proposed infrastructure would reduce collision by 6%, which means around 250 collisions avoided in five years. And to have a, something which is more effective, you need to dis have such solution uh, more numerous and more widely distributed in the area. So it, this is something that we, you have, we have to take into account. Um, the PhosphoG procedure, which is actually not very complicated, as you have seen, it is. Um, can be replicated elsewhere to plan the position of crossing structure and the, uh, for the application of uh, European funding. Um, we are also trying to plan uh, the, the possibility to use citizen science to help us in uh, determine a little bit more information regarding this we, in a project that we are in. And, um, uh, sharing the capabilities of Phosphor-G to experiment and improve the procedures and can reduce the collision and can inspire more researchers and technicians. Actually, in, in, uh, in Trentino, for example, most of the uh, public organizations are using QGIS, so it is very easy to, to give them some kind of 
and projects or whatever which is already created, thus helping the, to mitigate the conflict. But it is essential to develop long-term projects, so to actually cooperate with the local uh, governments, and um, this is to have a reduction of the number of intervention um, each year, but uh, slowly to cover all the territory. And to achieve this solution, the local government must, must be receptive on that, which is not always the case. Sometimes they are actually not uh, interested in, uh, in the situation unless there are uh, some uh, paper news that sh shows that are, you have some problems. A final and com the final reflection, and then I finished, are um, regarding the fact that uh, there are also some uh, uh, technological uh, development on that. You have the driver assistance systems integrated in the cars, in the last cars and the last generation cars, they all have these devices. And um, they can recognize, monitor, and reconstruct the surrounding environment. And uh, it, it is possible that the dedicated software in the, in the future will actually detect the, present, the presence of the animals, in, uh, even if they are so far, and they can actually help you to break before you have a collisions or reduce the, the impact. And um, another thing that could be also very interesting, also from the point of view of the open source, is that uh, uh, there are a lot of sensors that can be put uh, uh, around the road but uh, these road, road anti-collision devices um, could be developed to exchange information with the incoming cars, not only by activating the illuminated warning signs, that is what they already do, do but also they, they can help braking the cars and uh, warning the, the, um, the drivers. Thank you for your attention. This is the, um, the paper, the, you find the paper here, and uh, this was carried out in the framework of Transwild Biodiversa Plus project. Thank you very much. Thank you.